Hi everyone, it's Conrad Bobby Luck here, CEO of Investors Prime Real Estate and best-selling international author of Australian Real Estate Investing Made Simple. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is more literally about prediction that I'm going to make about the property market in Melbourne and that it's going to boom into 2026 and I'll show you why that is the case and why I believe this will continue even beyond 26 before there's a significant correction in the market, which is predictable and, you know, there's the sound reasoning behind this. So I'm going to unpack the property market today, go through property cycles, talk about different parts of the market and what different parts will be doing, where the money is and which areas you should avoid, definitely like a Kenny G concert. So welcome to today's video. You know, history repeats itself, especially with property. In shares and managed funds, there's a saying that past performance doesn't guarantee future performance. In property, it's the opposite. Past performance virtually guarantees future performance. If you look at the best performing suburbs in Melbourne, the city and Brisbane for the last 50 years, they're the same ones that will be for the next 50 years, probably. You know, if you look at definitely the last 10 years, that's very true. It's very rarely that a suburb changes its trajectory. And if it, if it does, there's a really good reason why it happens. Usually it's for the better, because some is going through gentrification and rejuvenation. So definitely studying history is where the money is. That's what's going to make you a lot of money in terms of identifying the growth factors of suburbs and why they've done certain things and why other suburbs keep underperforming. Bit of a personal disclaimer, I'm not here to give you any financial advice. I've never met you, I don't know your financial circumstance or your risk profile, so before you do anything, Seek independent financial advice from someone that is qualified and make sure that person is qualified based on the results they have, not just the, the actual letters after their name. A um, bit about myself, I'm a mortgage broker. I run a real estate company in St Kilda called Investors Prime Real Estate. I've come from a very structured financial planning industry, lending industry, both residential and commercial. The most important thing is that I'm a property investor. I'm in the market every day, refinancing, buying properties, so I've got my finger on the pulse. I'm sourcing properties for private clients all day long. I'm speaking to developers, valuers, lawyers, accountants. I have clients with huge property portfolios. So I've got the privileged situation where I can pick people's brains that are much smarter and wealthier than I am to work out what the market is doing. And then I package all the information up and give it to you guys. And that's what my YouTube channel is all about. I'm an author of two books. Both got a number one bestseller multiple times. Uh, if you want to get a copy of my finance book, jump onto bookonfinance.com.au and you get a bunch of freebies, including an online video course. And also my second book, which is Australian Real Estate Investing Made Simple. You can jump onto realestatemadesimple.com.au or any good bookshop, Amazon, Booktopia, etc. Now, let's get, and by the way, I really want to thank you guys for supporting me and buying my book. It's gone number one in multiple categories on Amazon um, and other bookshops as well. So I really want to thank you guys for buying my books. You never know when you publish a book if anyone's going to buy it, apart from your mum. So thank you very much. Also, as a special bonus for sticking around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to a free online video course, 15 hours and a 433-page manual, absolutely free. So for those of you who want to take things to the next level and continue education, this will be an invaluable resource for you. All you've got to do is stick around for free. Uh, you get it for free. There's no, there's no upsell. There's no um, any kind of special things you need to do. You just basically get access to it. Property cycles. Let's talk about the cyclical nature of the property market. Because we know now we've got a lot of data now, uh, especially with RP Data, Cologic, Residex, and, and you know companies like that that collect data from agents. We have a lot of data now, pretty much around about 70 years of data. That's pretty accurate since probably the 50s and 60s. You know, a lot of data from the State Revenue Office as well and the Taxation Office, a lot of census data, but a lot of data just from sales um, from real estate agencies to really give you an understanding of what's happening in the market. And the methodology for unpacking that data has been well established. Having said that, you've got to understand that most academics and most real estate agents are broke they don't have any money and they have no, they don't have large pro property portfolios. What I found is the people with large property portfolios usually are year 10 dropouts and they have no academic degrees behind them or university degrees. It's quite the opposite. In fact, every entrepreneur that I've met that is a multi-millionaire entrepreneur has never finished university or dropped out of uni very early or dropped out of high school. Um, because the school system has really failed us. The school system teaches you 
the worst thing you can ever teach you, which is don't copy from each other, when in reality, the smartest entrepreneurs copy from other successful entrepreneurs, and that's what they do. So it's a fundamental flaw in the education system, which has never been addressed. You know, it's kind of a bizarre thing when you think about it. It's so simple when you actually, when you find out from people, how did you get successful? Oh, I met a bunch of other successful people and copied exactly what they did. Okay, cool. That's it. Yeah, you don't have to be an innovator, guys. You just copy successful people, which is, which is how society progresses. I mean, that's what science is based on. But for some reason, the school system just fails to articulate that to us clearly. We can see that going back to property, that Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide pretty much are synchronised together in terms of the property cycles. Maybe if you take Adelaide out of the equation, but especially Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, you can see they're pretty much it's the same movement, generally speaking. And usually what happens with property cycles is Sydney goes first, then Melbourne, then Brisbane. And look, between the three states, we're pretty much 75% of the volume of the market. The market's worth $10 trillion and 75%, which is 7.5 trillion, is really dominated within these three capital cities. So, you know, it's pretty much where the action is, so to speak. And obviously this part of the world, Perth, Hobart, Darwin, ACT, is counter-cyclical to these, these particular um, cities. And you can see that what's happening at the moment is, which is a really interesting phenomenon, is every time we enter the new growth phase of the property cycle, and the cycles, by the way, have been disrupted by COVID-19 to some extent, but providing we don't have anything like that occurring in the future, or the foreseeable future, the markets will go back to its normal pattern, which is around eight, eight to nine years between the peak and the bottom of the market, right? So. They are getting shorter and shorter because there's more population coming into the country and they are reliant on the banking system, but it's still roughly around seven, seven, eight, nine years from the bottom to the top, roughly, depending if you're talking about Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. The, the thing that happens is when the market starts off, the first thing that happens is the high end, the mansions go first. So. You can see that if you divide the market in Sydney by percentiles, you've got the cheapest 25% of properties, you've got the 50 percentile, which is the middle of the market, which is, which is probably the big chunk of the market, and then you've got the top 75, 20, which is the 75th percentile, which is the top end 25%. And what happens is these mansions in Sydney especially, they're all 30, 40, 50 million, they're all paid off. There's no pressure on the owners to sell or not to sell. But when they do decide to sell, and the market's meeting them, it signifies the beginning of the new property growth cycle, which is what's happening in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. You can see there, in Sydney, the 75th percentile has gone up by 4%, in Melbourne, 1.8, and in Brisbane, by 4.4. Then what happens is the middle chunk of the market follows, and then the bottom gets dragged up, which is all the house and land packages, all the fringe suburbs, semi-industrial kind of suburbs, suburbs going through gentrification. Which is really interesting. Now, how do you know this? Because we can see already in newspapers, like this is an article from um, August the 21st, sellers of 7.4 million Hawthorne auction make 2.5 million profit in three years. So they're already selling their houses, making a lot of money. And this is the property there um, that's sold in Victoria. A stunning Victorian era family home in Hawthorne that's sold on the Hammer for 7.4 million at auction on Saturday, 2.5 million increase since it last sold three years earlier. Not a bad return. Bought it for five, sold it for, for, for another 2.5 mil. Um, also, you have things like Melbourne auctions, Glen Mary House sells 255 above expectations. So whenever you have vendor reserves being exceeded by a large chunk in kind of upper middle class and high end suburbs, now Glen Mary is a, not a rich area, it's an upper middle class suburb, definitely. You know the market's back and it's coming back and people are buying properties. Um, this is another one where Brighton, which is definitely the second most expensive suburb in Melbourne by median price, pay a, uh, pays 1.2 million over reserve for house they plan to demolish. So basically they just bought a house um, to knock down. And that gives you an understanding of, of where the market is heading. And there's hundreds of these articles now coming out. Hawthorne, Turag, where people pay half a million, a million above vendor reserve to secure the right property. So we can see there, Melbourne has bottomed out in November. We're, we're, we're definitely coming out from recovery. We're still in the negative territory. We're still zero, negative uh, 0.1 or something, 1.1 I think, but we're definitely, we're about to go positive and then we're gonna go into growth phase. And I'll show you where I think we'll end up in terms of the growth phase. So how do we know where we are in the property cycle, right? Because you've got to, 
if you track this, now remember, and I, I know I sound like a broken record, it's not timing of the market, it's time in the market that will determine your success. It's consistent investing over a long period of time. But having said that, if you want to play around with fixing rates, or living variable rates, or having a three to five year plan, you want to at least have an idea which way the market is heading. And that's what this video is about. This video is not designed to say, go all in for the next three years, I guarantee you're going to become a millionaire. It's saying based on my 25 year experience in finance and real estate, this is what I think the market's going to do between now and the next three or four years. Okay, So we have the peak of the market, we have a decline of the market, the bottom of the market, and the growth of the market. It just keeps going around and around. And, it's, and as I mentioned before, it's about seven to nine years around the clock, roughly, roughly. And every cycle can be slightly different because there's different impacting factors. There's the economy, there's interest rates, unemployment, migration. Melbourne is at the bottom of the cycle right now, and it's going up to the growth phase. So pretty much anything you buy now will give you the best part of the growth phase. Now, the fastest part of the growth phase is from 9 o'clock to 12. The bottom is slower, but it's still very consistent. We're getting 7 to 10% growth. From 9 o'clock to 12, you'll be getting your 12, 15, 20% growth, and then it will stop. Okay? Now, this is where every taxi driver is making money out of properties. Every barbecue you go to, they're talking about, can't believe the house across the road sold for 200 more than our house, you know? And everyone talks about property, because remember, the public gets in at the very top, always, when there's so much social proof that it's beyond question, because everyone's got a story of how much they made. The smart money, if you are timing the market, goes in at the bottom when there's an indicator of potential future growth. So what I do now is, I mean, I'm, I'm buying as much as I can, as often, often as I can, which is not that much because I'm maxed out. I have restrictions like, like anyone else based on my income. Um, but, you know, I love to buy more always, absolutely, without question. Um, but there's a restriction even on your credit file. The more traffic you have on your credit file, um, the less your score, which impacts your ability to borrow money. So in terms of where we are, we, we watch the Heron Todd White property clock, which is Heron Todd White valuers are the biggest valuation company in Australia. You can go into the website, which is www.htw.com.au, and you can download the monthly in-review report, which gives you a summary of the residential market. They also do the industrial market, the commercial market, every sector of, of different markets. And you can see that Melbourne is at the bottom here, um, going from the bottom of the market up, and Sydney's already taken off, okay? So they're already just, just in front of us. And then you have some places like Canberra, just at the peak of the market, about to go down. And then some places like the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, um, for example, Brisbane, about to go into a decline, okay? Now, is this science? Is this 100% bulletproof? No, of course it's not. And also, things can change very quickly, and also things can go backwards a little bit. It's not always that everything ticks forwards. You'll see sometimes things kind of move forwards and backwards on the clock. It's a rough indicator of where the smartest value is in Australia feel the market is at the moment. That's all it is. It's a, it's a guide. It's a tool. Okay? It's not science. Um, but it's a very accurate indicator in terms of its performance and track record. I've been watching the property clock now for over 20 years, and it's pretty accurate, you know, in terms of where we are. So time will tell how accurate it is. And by the way, every major capital city within their own city has three different types of properties because you have inner suburban property, metropolitan and regional. So you have three different clocks, not necessarily doing the same thing. So you've got to be aware of that. What we do at Investors Prime Real Estate is focus on blue chip areas or inner city um, blue chip suburbs located within 3 to 15 k's of the city roughly. So history repeats itself. We know there's going to be stuff happening in terms of global events. And you can go back to the 90s. We had the Black Monday stock market crash of 87. And we can see that whenever the stock market crashes, the money has to go somewhere. It always ends up in the property. Property and gold are very conservative investment choices compared to this, the volatility of the stock market or the futures market or, or anything else, including probably crypto if it, if it sticks around long enough. But you can see that we had the stock market crash of 87, property boom. We had the Australian recession we had to have from 90 to 95. We had property booms. We had the Asian currency crisis. 
and then property boomed. We had the dot-com bubble bursting, right? Property boomed. And then there was a correction. Um, we had the global financial crisis, property boomed. I mean, I was speaking at events in 2008, sharing the stage with Harry Dent, and he was talking about the bloodbath that never eventuated, by the way. So he was completely wrong in his predictions in Australia. Um, and it's all recorded, guys. You can't change recordings from 2008. I was much slimmer and a lot, lot more hair. You can't fix that. You, you can't digitally, or you, you could actually, you, you could do it through deep fake. But anyway, it is what it is. I was skinnier and younger, you could tell. And I was 100% correct. I was telling people, guys, this is the time to buy Elwood, St Kilda, Port Melbourne, Williamstown, Essendon, Mooney Point. If you've bought any of those suburbs, you would have tripled your money since 2008. Three times, not double, triple guys, triple. And Harry Dent was saying the market's gonna crash, bloodbath on the streets, sell your houses, buy gold. Well, you would have looked like an idiot if you followed his advice. Um, and then we had another correction, we had a boom, we had the China still glut. This is where the, the real estate market started to fail in China, Evergrande went under. They stopped importing steel and construction materials. COVID-19, property boom. Now this is what happened last property cycle since 2006. Have a look at the suburb that the boom. We have Brighton and Turak. And then these are the suburbs that hit a million dollar median price for the first time. This is from Domain. So there was a million dollar median price and they spilled over to other suburbs. 2010, 2011, 2012, so you have Q, Bowen, Glen Iris, and then you kept on going down the coastline and into the eastern suburbs, right? Park Orchards, Donvale, Eaglemont, Glen Waverley, Mont Albert, Templestowe, 2016, and see how it skewered towards the southeast, eastern suburbs in the bayside? Nothing in the west or the north, apart from Essen and a couple of other sub suburbs. And then it stopped in 2017. Okay, so once again, 2006, Turek and Brighton, East Melbourne, right? They're the suburbs, and just keeps growing. Now, what do you think is gonna happen in this property cycle? Same thing that happened last time. It's Turek and Brighton, Hawthorne, East Melbourne, and it's just gonna to continue to spill over, except these numbers now are three to five million instead of one million. It's the same thing, 2012, 2013, 2014, 15, 16, and then 17. Now after 17 happened, it came to a halt and then it went backwards a little bit because you can't just keep going up. You gotta go sideways, dip down a little bit and then take off again. Now remember, there are eight distinctive markets in Melbourne doing very different things. You have the west, the northwest, the northeast, outer east, southeast, Inner South, Inner East, Inner, and they got the Mornington Peninsula. I don't even know how this part of Melbourne, but it's a nice area, we'll give it to it anyway, right? When, when they're gonna fight, you know, Mornington Peninsula. I would pretty much cut it off here. But anyway, it is, it is what it is. So we have the biggest urban sprawl of any major capital city in the world, from one end to another, from, from this side, all the way to the tip. Um, this area here, boom, because you've got all the money there, all the schools, the best, it's the safest area, it's got the highest income demographics. And I've done a lot of videos of why this area has continued to outperform the rest of Melbourne, you know, for capital growth. The same thing is happening again. History is repeating itself. The same suburbs that started 2006 boom are now coming into vogue. Turag, Brighton, Hawthorne, East Melbourne, you know, and then next to Brighton is Brighton East and Hampton, Hampton East and then Bentley, and starts growing that way. Sandringham, it's the same thing with Turek. It just keeps spilling over into Hawthorne, Hawthorne East, and just keeps going. Baldwin, etc., etc. Then in 2008, you can see there, they went backwards a little bit. Because you can't just keep going up at double-digit growth indefinitely. There has to be a point where people run out of money and run out of sentiment to buy in those areas, and the areas have to have a breather, which happened. And that's where the market hits the peak of the market, and there's a small decline. The decline depends on the median price and the income demographics of a suburb. 
But it's all very cyclical and predictable. So it's just a question of what you're going to do, react versus respond. And most people will listen to the media and 95% of people react, 5% that have the education respond. At the bottom of the market, the greatest transfer of wealth happens at the bottom of the market, but the money is transferred from the uneducated to the educated. And you know, last time, in, during 2008 GFC, I was already fortunate enough to know a lot of developers, a lot of really wealthy developers that had millions of dollars in savings and, and you know, millions of dollars in projects. And a lot of them said to me that during 2008, a lot of builders, developers went bust because of different reasons. And they were fortunate enough to buy those projects with the A's from the banks in cents in the dollar. And I know developers that have bought so many projects in 2008 and 9 that they're still developing them today because they just got houses on them with the aid for you know, 10, 15, 20 units. Some developers told me they made more money during the GFC than any other time in the whole history of their career because they had the education, the awareness of what to do and they just did it and the opportunity was there. Those who didn't have the right structure, the right education, lost everything, which is unfortunate. I'm not trying to diminish that in any way, but I know a lot of developers who went bust. They've lost their houses, cars, everything because they had the wrong structure, wrong advice. They were overcapitalized. So remember, when you hear the end is near, just be very skeptical about it, guys, because we keep hearing about these articles, and I collect these articles, you know, and this is like, nothing can stop it. Australia is on the brink of the Great Depression-style economic meltdown that will last two years, with house prices falling by 50%, and unemployment to skyrocket, experts say, during COVID-19. And what happened during COVID-19? We had a boom, right? CBA warns the risk of 32% house price crash in prolonged downturn. Did it happen? This is from 2020. Let the, blood, let the bloodbath begin. House prices in Sydney and Melbourne could halve in the worst crash since the 1890s. <laughs> really? Interesting. Aussie homes 40% overvalued, leaving young buyers pr praying for a property crash. You're going to be praying for a long time, guys, before it crashes. A long time. And of course, nothing happened. And remember, do you guys remember this story, Brick and Slaughter? The 60 minute story of the disabled, it's comments because they got it so wrong. This is 16th of September, 2018. In the next few years, they said, well, next few years, it's now, what is it now? October, 2023, five years later, where is the bloodbath? What happened? We, we did double digit guys, we did double digit growth. In fact, it's so embarrassing because after that story ran, in 2021, for December the 31st, Melbourne did 15.1% growth <laughs> and Sydney did 25.3% growth. They couldn't get the timing worse if they tried, right? It's just, it's, it's Murphy's Law. I mean, it's crazy. And then Brisbane did 27.4% for the year. Can you imagine? So you're listening to 60 Minutes bloodbath on the street, right? We're all going to lose everything. Everyone's going to go bankrupt, 50% drop, and this is just the beginning. And then suddenly, oh, Australia prices in three capital cities have surpassed the $1 million mark for the first time. House prices grew, hit 33 year high the following year. And have a look what happened. So just to put it into perspective, January 21 to January 22, Australian residential prices went up by 22.4% RP data, guys. It's a fact now, despite all the failed predictions. So every time we have an economic doom and gloom, during the actual economic doom and gloom, when you're in the midst of it, everything is the worst. It's, it, there's a feeling it's going to continue forever. There's a feeling that this there's no end in sight, everyone's going to go bankrupt. And I don't know why, but there's a, always a small interest group that always tells you to sell your house at the worst possible time. No, you should do everything <laughs> but sell your house. Sell your cars and furniture if you have to. Just keep eating food and living in your house because you can always get the car and the furniture, but it's so hard to get a residential mortgage when things go bad. And every time we had an economic disaster, Look what happened. And this is 19, look at, look at the, what happened with the property prices. First home buyers grant introduced in 2008, then removed in 2010, boom. 
We had um, APRA changing re regulations and lending rules. Boob, do you have any articles written when APRA was changing those rules? How this is the end of property investing, investors will never be able to buy three properties because the new ratios max out people very quickly. Well, we got clients buying six, seven properties. Nothing's changed, guys, nothing's changed. My predictions, by the way, during all of this, during the GFC, was, was and you can watch my YouTube channel, I made these predictions in 2018, 19, and these are the results. BlackRock, 30% growth. Mentone, 29.6. Franks and South, 29.4. Morialic, 25.7. Albert Park, 24.1. Carrum, 19.8. Parkdale, 19.7. Balmorris, 19.2. Frankston, 18.8. Seaford, 18.5. St Kilda, 16.9. Sandringham, 16.5. Aspendale, 15.1. So when everyone was telling you the market's crashing, the market's correcting, bloodbath on the streets, 40%, 50% declines, I was saying, you guys are crazy, you have no idea what you're talking about. And then these are the results that actually occurred, because this is from the December quarter 2021. This is now past. Investor versus academic speculators. That's the difference. Now, of course, now everyone says, yeah, well, even Melbourne, this is from September the 25th, Melbourne house prices to jump 12% in 25. So the predictions now, and this is from KPMG, Melbourne's going to grow in 1.2% for last quarter. In December, quarter 24, 85 and then 12%. I think it's going to be much higher. I think next year when they're going to do double-digit growth and the same in 25. Now, even if I'm wrong by 50%, it still doesn't make a difference. You'll still do well with property. And remember, the biggest influx of migration is happening in Australian history in the next two years. The Albanese government is bringing 650,000 new migrants. 56% are coming to Melbourne because that's where all the jobs are. That's where all the opportunities are. This is what I think will happen to 26. I think the growth will occur... Like that, up to 26, I think in 26, mid-26, there'll be a slight correction and we could go down into the next part of the cycle. So the next three years, you've got a massive opportunity to set yourself up and potentially future generations for life if you get into the property market. And you've got to understand, guys, it's going to happen with or without you. If you do nothing, it's still going to happen. You're either going to be part of it or you're going to be watching it on the sidelines. That's the thing you've got to understand. It doesn't need your individual mortgage to make this happen. The money's already in the market. It's just going to happen with or without you. The question is, are you going to be part of it? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. That's what I think is going to happen. That's my prediction. And I could be wrong, but that's my prediction of what the market will do. I think the peak will be around 26, mid. And I'll make more predictions as we're getting close to 26, based on all the different variables that I mentioned before. And I did another video of, of five different reasons why the property market will boom in Melbourne. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. What's the main thing? This is the main thing, guys. 25 years from now, the average home in Australia might cost up to $6.3 million in median price. This is from Aussie Home Loans and RP Data. Projections show median house prices will reach their figure in Sydney by 2043. 20 years from now, 6.3 million from 1 million and 30,000, just two decades. Now once, once it gets to six, forget about ownership in Australia because wages will never keep up. So you're gonna have the top 1% controlling 90% of wealth in Australia, like in America. So if you're an average income owner on the 70 to 100 grand, this next three years could be the definitive time in your life where you're either gonna get into the market finally or miss the whole boat and the boat will never come back again. You're going to be renting until you die, basically. And your kids will be renting as well because you're, going to have, you're not going to be able to transfer wealth across to your children of future generations and they will never get into the market with their wages because wages will stagnate behind capital growth of property prices. So it's literally like the next three years could be the really determining factor whether you and your bloodline will own real estate and be upper middle class or will be lower middle class struggling for the rest of their lives. That, that's the reality. This is how critical I see the next three years. Because the moment you get to a million dollars, guys, for median price, and especially 1.2, 1.3, it virtually it eliminates virtually everyone from the market. There's only around 10% of the suburbs in Melbourne now that are affordable, 
affordability has diminished so much. And remember, wages are stagnating way behind capital growth. Capital growth is doing double digits. Wages are just not even keeping up in pace with inflation. Aussie Homes and Co-Logic survey predicts the average price will be 5.8 million in Melbourne. 5.8 million in Melbourne from 800,000 or 900,000 now. 2.9 million in Canberra. 2.5 in Perth. And 2.3 in Brisbane with the biggest increase in Melbourne. So Melbourne will go from 1 million to, to 5.8 million. What are you going to do about it? Like if you knew this was guaranteed to happen in 20 years time, if you could see the future, what are you going to do about it today? What knowledge and actions and habits do you have to develop to take advantage of this to make sure you don't miss out on this action? That's what I want to really just encourage you to think about and ignite a sense of urgency internally because ultimately, you've got, if you don't have the knowledge, you won't be able to take advantage of this. That's, that's the reality. So what's the next step? Interested in learning more? Number one is, these are some resources that I recommend you take up. Do whatever you, you can do to get down to Melbourne and spend two days with myself and a bunch of other experts and learn once and for all this whole game of property and how to win it. We run 10 of these events per year, right here in our office in St Kilda. We have a seminar room of 60, 60 people. We have usually, we, we cap it at 55. It's a two day event. It's jam packed with information. Cameron's been in real estate for over 40 years. I talk about real estate sourcing um, methodology. Stephen um, from Loans Australia talks about structuring and finance. We, we teach you the whole thing in two days. You walk away with a rule plan. Um, <coughs> tickets are very affordable, guys. They're less than 50 bucks. You get a copy of my book as well, um, and which is like a manual for the whole two-day event. So for those who are interested, definitely register yourself. They do sell out very quickly. You do get a copy of my book, a hard copy. It's a, it, and it's like a manual, a much more detailed manual for the two-day event. For those who can't make it, and there's a gift, as I mentioned at the beginning, just because you stick around to the end of the video um, today, you can access instantly, in a few minutes, my online video course for free, which is a recording of the two-day event that we held some time ago, very yet $497. There's nothing to buy, there's no upsell, there's no, nothing you've got to subscribe to. All you've got to do is just follow the link below, click on it, register. It just asks you your first name and your email, and you can start watching the videos instantly. And this is really just a gift from me to you for free, no strings attached, so you can get the education to make sure you get your, your chunk of the pie that's, that's going to happen in Melbourne. Because when that market hits 5.8 million, and the average person is earning $160,000, forget about b borrowing money to buy a house. It's, it's game over. You won't be able to buy a two-bedroom apartment with that income. So it could be the last chance to get in into that property market. It's very easy friendly. Once you register, you just click on the video, download the manual. It's simple stuff, guys, but it's essential. Get the education. It's free. There's nothing to do, and you can instantly access it below. Some of you will be interested in having a strategy session with myself. I am running very low on the time because I have so many clients that are working with me full time and I'm building their property portfolios. There's only a few of these that I'm making available in the future. I will be hiring people next year that will be working with Investors from Real Estate um, and they'll be doing consultations with my clients um, as I step back from this because I'm simply just too busy with, with existing clients and helping them build their wealth. But you can still get me for an hour on Zoom, free, no strings attached, where I take an idea, I work out where you are, where you want to be, and I do a whole plan for you. So I take an idea into a plan, into action. And remember guys, the most important thing is to develop a plan, an all-encompassing plan around property acquisition. That means understanding finance, how to get market ready. What are the three things you need to have to be market ready? Trust versus personal ownership. All those things you've got to understand, property selection methodology, your whole team, what does a financial planner do, an accountant, a mortgage strategist, etc., etc., etc. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's not going to happen magically. It takes hard work and a lot of hours and dedication. None of my clients with five or ten properties got there by accident. They did it because it was a plan they had and they dedicated themselves and they implemented it and it cost them time and money and they persevered. And let me tell you, property takes months and months 
Just sourcing your property will take you a month. Settlement, 60 and 90 days. There's four months gone there. I mean, everything takes weeks and months. It's, it's, there's nothing quick about property. So it's a game of patience. It's a get rich very slowly over a long period of time kind of a game. And that's why I think a lot of people, especially with the instant gratification generation, they're not really interested in it because it just takes so long to get a result. Um, a lot of people just struggle to get from A to B and they're wasting a lot of time and money. And remember, you can always waste money, but you can't waste time. Once your time runs out, that's it. You can always get more money, you can't get more time. It's a finite resource. So what I teach you is how to get from A to B, path of least resistance. And you also walk away with my whole team. So if you don't have a good accountant, good lawyer, I can give you my lawyers, my accountants, my financial planners, my mortgage brokers, my whole contacts in the industry. And to be honest with you, it's worth just having the session just to get those contacts because they are the best in the industry and I can use whoever I choose to use. I don't, I'm not restricted financially um, which financial plan I can go to or which account I can go to. So I give you my whole team. So if you haven't got a team, this is one of the key ingredients. If you want a secret to wealth creation, if there is such a thing, is getting the right team. You want to make sure that these people are successful investors in, in their own right. So you walk away with the strategy. It's paint by the numbers, guys, of how to build and structure a large property portfolio that can replace their income for life. So to qualify for that consultation, because the cheapest property that I source is around 700, 750, you need to have at least and be an employee of 95,000 P and have access to 112,000 in cash or 126,000 in equity. They can just transact. If you can't transact, there's no point doing a strategy session because it's like joining a gym without going to the gym and lifting weights. Like ultimately, your results will be from lifting weights if you join the gym. So ultimately, you're building a property portfolio by buying properties. If you can't buy a property, well, there's no point doing anything with property because it involves buying properties. If you're a couple, you need to be on that 120, 140 combined income and about 112,000 in cash or equity available for redraw to get that 700,000 or purchase. All you've got to do, by the way, to, to qualify is just email me directly, conrad at investorsprime.com.au and just request a 60 minute free consultation and I'll just book you in for, um, for the times that I have. And if you've been to a live event, you have this form, fill out the form, scan it, email it to me or just email me directly. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope to see you at a live event in the future. Um, that's it for me guys, thank you very much and I'll see you on the inside.